that I was under arrest. Uh, they left me there butt naked and refused to cover me mm. for 20 minutes. Mm. As I screamed, cover me up, you know, cover me up. But I don't want to talk about the negative things of that because that's what they want me to talk about. I'm going to talk about the positive thing in that. And what happened then is they became, they gave me a national platform. And when they gave me a national platform, that's when I realized you picked the wrong nigga. <laughs> Go ahead. You picked the wrong nigga. You should have got somebody else. You should have picked somebody else. You should have did this to someone else. The violation goes beyond words, how I could describe, and the things that I had to endure since being released from jail uh, for, for speaking out against the injustices that are being committed against our people. Um, I stand here now and I say that I'm so very grateful for that situation. It's taught me how to uh, change the things that I say and make it in a way that I can't be hooked. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for us to react in a way that they want us to react so they can put us in chains. That's what they're looking for. So out of this situation, if anybody asks me what have I learned, I've learned how to speak in a way that you can still understand where I'm coming from, still feel my passion, but it doesn't make it so offensive that I have to be arrested for it. Because we live here in America. And you can get, you can go to jail for offending someone. It's not against the law to offend someone, but they will arrest you as long as you're not, if you're not playing the spoons, when you put your spoons down and you don't want to play the spoons no more, then you become a problem. Then you become a problem. And what I'm saying now is I decided that I'm going to have to be a problem. It's just, it's just going to have to be a problem. So I appreciate this day. It's a full 360. Um, I appreciate everyone that stayed in my corner, and I haven't forgot about you motherfuckers that wasn't. So I appreciate Speak it. on it. Let me ask you a question. Let's deal with the now. Right now. The up and coming election <laughs> with Hillary Clinton. And who? Hillary. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. What's going on with that? What should our people look forward to? Do you think debating over which one is going to be right for our people, who should we vote for if we need to vote? You know, uh, I, I don't understand how we can debate two evils and try to figure out which one's the best. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, if you ask me who do I want to win, you know, we, we have to understand that there's a things that can happen that can change the dynamics of the way we live in an instant. Okay? For them to enact martial law, the President Obama would have to do a third term. Right? If they give him that opportunity, then we already know what's coming next. Right? We already know what's coming next. If we take Hillary Clinton with her witchcraft and her trickery and her, uh, her making us pacified and docile and make us feel safe, you know, that's the, that's the best choice for us blacks, right? Feel safe with Hillary. Um, that's a lie as well. If we go with Trump, at least if Trump becomes president, then all of these half-ass niggas is going to have to realize it's real shit. It's going to be real shit going down. They're going to have to do something. They're not going to be able to lull themselves to sleep anymore. They're not going to be able to sit in their comfortable home and feel like they're safe anymore if Trump becomes president. So when people ask me, who do I want to become president? I'm ready for black people to do something. I really am. So if, 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 if we ain't talking about us trying to do something, then uh, we need someone that's going to put exactly what they mean in front of us. Right? We need exactly what's, what's happening. And Trump makes it very clear where he stands. And the people that stand by Trump make it very clear. So when you talk about somebody that's being crystal clear, then we already know what we need to do. We already know what we need to do. I'd rather have a straightforward something that I can see than to be pacified and to believe in something that's not. Let me ask you one more question before we wrap it up. Ever since last year, with the incident that took place with you, we've seen an uptick in police brutality and a downplay in people speaking out against it. It's like motherfuckers cut their tongues out. We don't have a lot of people standing up and speaking about the hypocrisy that was ta of what's taking place to our people. Now, about this week that just that, that we just uh, got out of, we just saw two executions take place. Because keep in mind, they're doing this on a weekly basis. It's just what they tend to nationalize or televise. That's when we get it. But there's so many unnamed brothers and sisters who have fell to these demons. They just put out a video of a 15-year-old woman 
being raped by an NYPD officer in the jail cell. He was so blazing and blank. He did the shit knowing that he was getting taken. Damn. What can you say to our family out there as a voice, as a powerful voice that they try to silence against what we see as police brutality? I don't call it that. I call it terrorism. It's a continuation of what happened in the chattel slavery days. It's a continuation of what happened to our grandparents in the Jim Crow lynching days. It is another, you know, to me it's just a continuance of it. Huh? Another layer. It's another layer. So you got the KKK taking the sheets off and putting blue on. What are some words of advice or some words of power that you could say to our family out there? First off, stay safe, right? Have it in your mind every day that you leave your house, that you're going to leave alive, you're going to come back alive, okay? Put it in your mind. Make sure that you stay safe. Make sure that you come alive. Come home alive. It might sound preposterous to you, but if, as a black person in America, those are the things you need to be thinking about. I need to be able to get out of this house, do what I need to do, handle my business, and get back home alive. Okay? So if we do that, then maybe we need to begin to avoid them. Uh, don't shop where they shop. Don't go where they go. Try to, to, to build your day around avoiding, you know, serpentine, right? Just move, move, move in a different way. Uh, when you talk about a 12-step program, one of the first things is people, places, and things. When we're trying to save ourselves, we need to look at the same thing. People, places, and things. Go where they're not at. Spend your money where your people are. You know? Um, as far as watching these things over and over again, okay? We, we, we got to understand that we cannot continue to keep watching these things over and over again. It's a reason why they're putting it in the media. There's a reason why they got it on replay. There's a reason why. Now, whether you want to figure out that reason, that's on you. But we need to decide that we're going to stop showing these imagery so we can get it in our minds that it's wrong. As long as we keep watching it, it's going to be easier to watch, which makes it easier to take, which makes it easier to stomach, which makes it easier to be a next hashtag. You just scroll by it next time. You just, just keep in by mind, the Dallas shooting, you only saw that for a few hours. That's right. They begin. They showed you the scenery of when they killed the brother. They showed you the standoff, and then after that, cut it. You can't even find it online anymore. Let's not even talking about the Baton Rouge because they never even put that footage out. That's right. Okay. So they're not going to show you anything dealing with the resistance. They will not keep looping that. But they what they, what they're going to show is. The murders is called, remember, we were young, they called it snuff films. That's right. There's a report that just came out that said PS, PTSD could be triggered by watching these videos. So people who have dormant genes of their great-great-grandparents being tortured or seeing people tortured, if they have something in their blood from their ancestors having their heads chopped off or being hung, these videos are, in, are being utilized to enact these dormant memories. So now when they come with the police state, you just wave the white flag and you don't want no mas. That's right. Because you get conditioned. Yes. You get conditioned. There's, a, there's parts in your body that's called muscle memory. Your muscles don't have to know anything. But if you do the same thing over and over again, then muscle retain information. Right. right? And it gives it muscle memory. When you talk about your brain, your brain is a muscle as well. So if your thigh could have muscle memory, do you, don't you think your brain could have muscle memory as well? Right, if you continue right. to watch the same things over and over again, if it's easier, it gets easier and easier and easier to watch. It gets easier to stomach. Okay? It gets easier to believe. It gets easier not to believe. Uh, what I say now is what I've said before. We need to separate ourselves. We need to police ourselves. We need to be self-sufficient. The only way that we're going to stop them from killing us is to remove ourselves from their proximity. Right. Remove the ourselves. Most, the most power that I feel. Get the mic. The most power that I feel is when we're all together. No doubt. Yeah. The most safest that I feel is when we're in buildings like this. I could see the future when we're in rooms like this amongst our brethren. I can't see that shit with the knuckle draggers. I cannot see that with these brothers and sisters who are kinfolk. They skin folk, but they not kin folk. Right. They don't want the best things in their life. They don't want the best out of your life. They don't want the best for your children. They're looking at your children in predatory ways. You feel what I'm saying? So we have to really begin to entertain the concept of being amongst each other 
the ones that are on the same frequency and send apology letters to those that we left behind later on. But we got to get ourselves stronger. Okay? I don't want to be anywhere in the proximity, like she was saying, of our natural enemy. That's not how you prepare. That's not how you train yourself. And that's about the healing process that we have to undergo by going through all of this trauma. So I'm all, I'm all on board, man. We need to begin to entertain how are we going to move forward. 2020 is around the corner. That's correct. 2020 is clear vision. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to use these next few years to clear up our vision so we can see clearly? And for the people that we may have to leave behind, they'll be able to look at us and then say, you know what? I've had enough of this Trump shit. I had enough of Hillary's boot on my neck. It's time to go ahead and get with these people because they own something that's right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. You have to uh, just step outside of yourself and do something. That's the only kind of advice that I can give our people now, is do something. Everybody's not going to be a frontline warrior. Everybody's not going to be able to, to take a, a, a police charge and go to jail. Everybody's not going to be able to do that. But there is something that you can do to be proactive in a movement to the freedom of your people. Yeah. Find your niche. Find how you can help. Everybody's not going to be able to do what we do. Everybody's not going to be able to, to have an oppositional personality. Okay? But try to figure out what you can do so we can begin to be self-sufficient, count on each other, police ourselves, grow our own food, teach ourselves. We have to start taking time out to invest in each other so we can live. And love ourselves. Because our people are running around trying to have Europeans love them. That is what I'm seeing is a lack of love, and they are equating love with Europeans hugging them. Love yourself. Mm. Once we begin to love ourselves, you will understand what I'm saying. You will never want their hugs. You don't need their hugs. All they need to see is us loving ourselves. We don't need their love. It's not real. So we have to get back on that, and that is our power. That is our kryptonite. That's what's going to keep these, 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 these demonic thoughts, this demonic energy, this demonic frequency away from us, like the brother Pharaoh taught. Don't, don't, we have to raise our frequency to delta and above. Not on Alpha Beta. So we got to change the music, change the music, change the things that we begin to eat. What you look at on TV is what you eat because your eyes, your ears, and your mouth is eating at the same time. All of the reality ratchet shit that's going on, we got to let that go. You dig what I'm saying? All of that trap music is putting you in a trap. Let that go. If you're going to do